Uh, I'm here with Chris of Freedom Call to talk about their latest record, Silver Romance, out on Steam Hammer very shortly for all of you to enjoy. And I love the fact that you're calling this Silver Romance because I, I feel like there is a little bit of a silver anniversary relating to it. Yes, right, recognized. So we are celebrating our 25 years uh, anniversary. It's the Silver Wedding. So that is one of the reasons why we um, named it Silver Romance. So it's not, but it's not only because of the wedding we are celebrating. Um, it's also, yeah, I, th I think the meaning of silver, I, all, I all, always was uh, preferring the metal silver already as a child. So when I got some gifts for a uh, birthday or religious something so from my aunts and from my uncle and my grandma and things and i got silver so i i'm, I'm loving my e earring silver everything silver and uh, the meaning of silver is freedom freedom call freedom and yeah clarity and it strengthen your self-confidence and your fantasy and things like this 25 years, it's a long time. Uh, it's it's uh, almost three decades. Uh, <laughs> did, you, did you ever imagine uh, to be sitting here uh, 25 years later talking about Freedom Call, still making great music, still putting out new music, uh -huh. still creating new records? Oh, I never was thinking about that. What will happen in 25 years or 100 years or 200 years? No, no, my plan was just when I started to uh, write own songs and uh, made my first productions, that my aim was one day in my life, I want to release 10 albums. I got it, so I can retire right now. <laughs> it's done, it's done. <laughs> Has it been easy for you to keep the essence? Because Freedom Call, there is an essence to the band. There is an underlining essence. Has it been easy for you to always keep that essence alive and well across these 25 years, considering that the world around you has been sometimes quite dark, but you always find a way of creating very bright music? Oh, yeah, it's it's our attitude. So it's it's our vision and it's our uh, authenticity. So I can't do that in a different way. So I I really tried it out to write some dark music, some gothic like I I checked out everything, but it's not working. It's always the result is always yeah too happy, too cheesy, whatever. So um, I got some requests from other bands. So, hey, Chris, would it be possible that you're supporting us, maybe producing, or you can uh, write a song for our band? And I'm always saying, hey, please write your own songs. When I'm going to start to write a song for you, you are, you are sounding like Freedom Call. <laughs> so yeah, so it it's, has that, it's my that way. built in DNA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Considering the anniversary, this 25 year anniversary for you guys, did, did that force you to approach this record any differently from any other record that you created before? Oh no, not on, not on purpose. So everything what's, uh, what's sounding a bit different to previous works, it happened accidentally. So, um, because we, we're not planning, we, we have no concept or we have no, calculation when we're starting to write the songs for an album or when we're starting the production. So there's not really a plan that we said, oh, let's do it in a different way. We just do in our stuff what, what's coming out of us. So it's the melodies that are the arrangements. And I think all these circle of, of inspiration that also is creating the sound. So I think you can change the sound technician every every hour or every day. So we will sound the same. It's sound like way, freedom calls. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but speaking of sound, your microphone there is hitting okay. your, your jacket and it's making okay. a little bit of Okay, sorry, feedback. sorry. What's to do? I will de-plug it. And this way, 
Oh, better, better, better. <laughs> okay. So every so often I could hear some static. Okay. So I, that's why I just wanted to, to mention. Uh, it, you, you mentioned about bands asking you to write songs for uh, for them. If, if you had to define yourself as a songwriter, uh, how would you explain to somebody what kind of songwriter you are? Oh, I'm a very old school songwriter. So I grew up with bands like Saga uh, from, from, from Canada. Yes, the Saga from Canada. Or I grew up with Genesis. I love, uh, I, I'm still loving Alan Parsons project. And so it's a very wide collection of, of uh, music styles. I also was uh, listening to strange things like Emerson Lake and Paul pictures of an exhibition, a bit jazzy, really crazy. And I was 13 years old, so it was quite strange for a, for a, guy, for a boy in this age. And all this inspiration made me to, to this person who's writing songs in this old school like style. So I'm not listening to other um, um, productions just to find out what is the trend right now? What is at, at this moment, what's the modern? I don't care about that. I'm just doing that, what it's flowing out of me and the rest, you can like it or you can dislike it. I hope you like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Quite easy. <laughs> I, I, I love that attitude. Like you can either like it or you can hate it, but I, I do hope you like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, is it? It's also, it's also the question um, um, if fans or listeners, they have influences uh, to, to the band when they are saying, ah, oh, Chris, can you write? And no, because they are listening to Freedom Call because it's our style. When we would change our style or we would flow with a trend or anything like this, then you have no chance to keep up your trademark. Then it's not freedom call anymore. Yeah, exactly. Then it's something else. Uh, I, I totally see where you're coming from. Now, th this record, uh, when I was listening to it, I, I found the album to have a lot of diversity in it. But that doesn't mean that the diversity creates chaos within the record. The record still feels like a Freedom Call album from beginning to end, but it, it does have a lot of diversity. Is this okay. diversity a result of perhaps you guys wanting to create a little bit more of an eclectic record, or is that just a representation of who you are as a listener, not just as a musician? It, definitely. I think one reason could be that um, we split the songwriting. So um, the most of the songs are written by, by myself, and um, this time, five songs are written by Lars, our guitar player. So uh, he comes from a little bit different generation, a younger generation. And um, his songwriting is a bit, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty modern. So in comparison to my style, I'm listening to uh, following the 80s, 90s, and he's a bit more modern. And maybe this makes it more colorful, finally. So because I, 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 I didn't try to um, try to change some parts of Lars songwriting, I, I, I let him feel totally free in arranging and songwriting with the instruments and with the vocal line. I just uh, did what he told me. And I think that makes it uh, yeah, more colorful in this way. So and makes it a bit different to some previous work in the early years of Freedom Call. Was it easy for you to give up a little bit of the reins and, uh, and allow him to, to have some control over some of these songs? Oh, oh yes, yes. So Lars, he's a member since uh, 2005. So, uh, so we are really trusting 100%. And I recognized that it's a positive in, in, um, 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 influence to, for Freedom Call when something will change a little bit. But the most important, finally, is that it will be freedom call in the end. So it, it's not that we are, oh, that is sounding a little bit like, I do not know, like uh, uh, Megadeth or anything like this. 
uh, I would like to sound like Megadeth, but <laughs> 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 yeah. you know, it, I would like to it, sell it, as much records. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you want to sound like Megadeth. I think you want to sell as much records as Megadeth. <laughs> yeah, I think there's I, a difference. There's a yeah, difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, you are right. I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the record vocally is is really magnificent. You do a phenomenal job. Uh, did, did you, you approach the, the recording process any differently? for this album once again considering it is a 25 year anniversary you got to put your best suit on yeah so i took all the power and glory i got over the 25 years and yeah and then i i was screaming out all this energy into this record no i i did my 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 uh, usual way but maybe the years before so i'm talking about the pandemic so that made me a little bit more hungry. So because I, I really was, I, 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 I couldn't wait for to continue with uh, recordings, going on tour and all these things around, traveling and maybe that is the reason why. Well, whatever the reason is, you sounded really good on this record. Like uh, I, I felt like, uh, uh you, almost a little bit loose like uh very warm in the delivery and and really bringing the lyrics to life and speaking of the lyrics uh how was writing the lyrics for this record oh it was different so what i told you lars had total total freedom to do with his songs what he wants to do and the most of my songs i wrote the lyrics and for two songs for in quest of love and big back Big Bang Universe, our um, drummer, Rami Ali, was uh, co-writing the lyrics, what he did in the past many times on the Beyond album and the Master of Light album. And he's very, very in tune, very talented in find the right words, also for the pronunciation to sing the lines and things like this. It, it, the songs that you're not writing the lyrics for, does, do, do those songs require a little bit more work from your end in order for you to get the right vocal delivery uh, for the way the words come across, like you said, the pronunciation and such? Yeah, I think when singers are writing their own lyrics, usually it's in the, in the most um, situation um, that singers are writing the lyrics, um, that you're really taking care of the sound of the words. So, of course, the meaning a little bit should be OK as well. And um, but I'm really taking care of that. The words are sounding nice and they, they're sounding gentle and sounding comfortable. And it has to be comfortable to sing because after production, there will come one day the situation you're staying on stage and you have to sing all the shit live. <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah, th that's when the the pedal hits the metal, if you will. Yeah, ex yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's what we always um, avoid or will avoid for the future is to use some uh, backing or uh, vocal tracks they're running from the computer or something, not lead vocals. We are using uh, keyboards. And we're using less vocal uh, choir support that mm -hmm. it's sounding big. Yeah, we are four persons. It's not possible, but no lead vocals. And um, I, I think there's a point that it could be a bit too much when you are starting to uh, play the lead vocals from the uh, sample track. I don't disagree with you at all. I, I, I saw a band recently where a lot of the lead vocals uh, were were from not a lot, but quite a few of the lead vocals were coming in through the computer. And yeah. at that time, at that point in time, what's the point of being watching there the band live? You might as well just go home and listen to the CD. Yeah, or you're a good actor and nobody can recognize it. Then it's okay. I know, well. but, but when <laughs> when when the the voice is is coming through the PA and you're not moving your mouth, <laughs> it's like. Yeah. That's a big mistake of, of the singer. So <laughs> they need to fake it a little bit better. Now, speaking of live, do you have a favorite uh, Freedom Call song that you love to perform live? Oh, 
too many good songs of Freedom Call. No, I, I think it, it, dep it always depends on how the audience is reacting about the song. So because it's not because of me. So I like to sing, yeah, a lot of songs because it's a nice vocal line or whatever. But I'm enjoying the reaction of the, the audience. And we when we're playing like, yeah, our smashing hit metal is for everyone. Yeah, and all the people are singing along. Hey, what's an amazing feeling. And so when I'm uh, thinking back to the time when I wrote the song in my small room at home, in a small village in Germany, and then we're gonna play in Japan and all the people are singing along this song. How crazy is that? Indeed, and, and that's what it makes it all worth it. Yeah, of course, yes, exactly, all... exactly. Uh, you know, I, I, you, you mentioned the word metal and I have to ask you this question because I keep hearing a lot of people saying that metal is dead. Uh, you know, there, there's no metal anymore, metal is dead. And I, 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 as much as I don't agree with that statement, I want to ask you about power metal because I do feel like power metal these days is struggling to still be power metal. H how do you view that very specific subgenre of power metal? Is it so dead? Hon uh, honestly, I'm not really into this power metal scene, metal scene. I'm just doing power metal and I love it to do it. But I'm not this guy who's headbanging the entire day and saying, oh, our power metal lives forever. <laughs> but yeah, I'm talking a lot with some uh, fellows and friends and bandmates and things. No, I don't think it's dead. It's, it's not dead. So it never was the most popular music. It never was. It was always an underground uh, business, the metal scene. But I... Um, I recognize that the audience is getting a bit older, that same that what we are doing. So, so unfortunately, there's still no receipt to stop it. But anyways, yeah, the young people, it's a different, or the real young people, they it's a different generation. They are growing up, they are just able to listen to a song for 10 seconds. Then next, skip it, skip it, skip it. And I think rock music, hard rock, metal music, I think it's a, it's a, it's a feeling, it's an attitude, it's, a, it's more than just 10 seconds of a noise. You have to feel it and you have to understand it and you have to spend time with it. In, in this time when you were sitting in your, in, in, in your couch and you were looking at the artwork of a new vinyl and thing, you were following the lyrics and did it again and again and again. I think this these times are over for the most of the young kids. So, so that because part is the next. Yeah, that, that part of, of the, the that part of, of metal is dead. The way you uh, the way you enjoy music, the way yeah. you approach it, the way you digest yeah. it. Yeah, but metal at itself, I think it got more popular because you can buy on, on the big counters shirt of Metallica, ACDC, Aura Maiden and things like this. And the young people are wearing the shirts, but they have no idea what, what does it mean. <laughs> I see. I see that a lot too. I see that a lot. And and you have a lot of bands now looking at forget about albums. They just want to release singles because, like you said, the the new audience. That's where they're gearing for. Is it hard for a band like Freedom Call that's been around for twenty five years that has this old school uh, essence to them to to deal with these changing times, the way the world is is going? Ah, uh, I I would say it never was easy in this music business. But for all bands, okay, but the very big, big bands, Metallica and so on. Um, but for bands like Freedom Call, it never was easy because we have to travel a lot. You have a lot of uh, expenses and you have uh, low budgets. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, it is how it is. So because we are not able to change the situation, it's just that we can say, hey, we won't give up, we will continue, we will survive and think in an optimistic way. And um, yeah, when we're starting and, and um, soon we, we're gonna start our European tour with a new album. And 
over the years you have so many yeah i i do not like the word fan fan sounds like totally crazy and under out of control and things like this and i like it to say friends and we we really we you you can collect new friends and you will meet them in uh, the several countries and things and that is a beautiful moment to see all these people again and again on your concerts and um i think just that is worth enough uh, to continue with that speaking of that my last question for you is you already mentioned you're going on a european tour and i was going to ask you how you're celebrating not only the release of the album but this 25 year silver uh anniversary of yours european tour and and where is that going to take you oh yeah so the firstly we we're gonna start i think in two weeks we start in germany and then already the summer festival season is starting and uh yeah we have lots of festivals to play also in, in europe portugal spain uh, uh czech republic and, and more i have to check my schedule and then we're gonna restart our tour our silver silver romantic metal nights in september oh isn't it isn't it yeah, it has a nice ring to it yeah <laughs> And we we're gonna restart in September, October, November, December, and it will uh, yeah, it will take um, it will continue till twenty five. Wow! So it's, you guys are gonna be busy. Yeah, that's good. That's good. It's amazing. Marvelous. I mean, that's the whole point. That's the whole purpose. You release an album. Yeah. You want to be busy. You want to be on the road. Yeah. That's that's our plan because Freedom Call is not a band who is um, longing for staying for months in a studio to work every day on single grooves or beats or sounds or anything like this. I'm happy when it's over. Then we can go on tour. Yeah, because yeah, be, be, because it's meeting friends, it's meeting people, it's um, screaming out your vision your attitude whatever it's not in the studio it's yeah it's okay but it's better on stage yeah it's it's a healing process as well because when i'm sure when you're there it's it gives you energy to continue and uh, and the energy you get from the audience uh works almost like vitamins yeah so we 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 can avoid to eat some fruits things and <laughs> green stuff <laughs> Uh, Chris, thank you very much for your time. It's it, it was an absolute pleasure to chat with you about this incredible uh, anniversary that you guys are celebrating this year, 25 years. Man, a lot of bands don't last two years, never mind 25 years. So uh, <laughs> congratulations to you and the guys and congratulations on the album Silver Romance and uh, enjoy your touring and enjoy your festival season. Pedro, thank you very much for your time, for, for the very nice talk to you. And um, we will enjoy our tour and hope to talk to you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Good hope luck to talk to you again and maybe maybe see you across one of these one of these shows. We're going to be in Europe this summer, so you never know. Maybe I'll come knocking on your door and we'll see each other at a show. Please do. You're always welcome. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. All the best, Chris. Thank you very much for your time. Pedro, have a nice time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.